After watching this video, you should be able to describe the timing of heart murmurs caused by valvular lesions. Now, murmurs are sounds that are generated by turbulent blood flow. Normally flows laminar, turbulent blood flow causes heart murmur sounds. Now, the types of murmurs we're focusing on are caused by valvular lesions. The types of valvular lesions we could have are stenosis, where there's a narrowing of the valve. Forward flow across that narrowed, partially obstructed valve causes the turbulent blood flow. The other possibility is a regurgitation type of murmur where the valve is not closing properly. Backward flow across that incompetent valve also causes turbulent flow. That also causes the heart murmur. These are the two major types of heart murmurs we're going to focus on. There's other types of murmurs that we'll discuss in another video. Here's the Wiggers diagram that's critical to understanding the timing. We have S1, the onset of systole, which is made up of IVC and ejection. And then we have S2, which is the closure of the semilunar valves, which is the onset of diastole. We first have IVR, and then we have our three components of filling. And then there's diastole there. So between S1, which is the closure of the AV valves, systole, closure of the semilunar valves, S2, the onset of diastole, and then it repeats back to S1 again. And all of these opening and closing events are caused by pressure differences between the left ventricle and left atrium and also the great arteries, in this case the aorta. Now so we can put in for systole IVC and ejection and for diastole IVR and filling and we can categorize these types of murmurs into a systolic or diastolic murmur. So a stenosis murmur again is when there's forward flow across an open valve and during systole ejection is the only phase that we have an open valve and diastole filling is the phase where we have an open valve. So aortic valve stenosis and pulmonic valve stenosis are going to be when we would hear a stenotic systolic murmur and during diastole we would have mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis as the diastolic stenotic murmurs that we would hear. Now we can put in for the systolic murmurs over here an ejection type of murmur because remember that's when the semilunar valve is open and for the diastolic murmurs over here we would have these murmurs as a filling murmur heard during the filling phase because that's when the AV valves are open. Now regurgitation murmurs we have to put in either as systolic or diastolic so if it's mostly systolic it'll be under a systolic murmur and if it's mostly diastolic it'll be a diastolic murmur. So let's put that in and the way to think about this is for a systolic murmur, mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation would fit there. And for diastolic, aortic regurgitation and pulmonic regurgitation. And the reason why is during systole, during IVC, and during ejection, the mitral valve is supposed to be closed. Now, it's also supposed to be closed during IVR, but since that's mostly systole, this is all going to be what we would see for mitral regurgitation. Now, the reason why we have this written this way is during IVC and ejection and IVR, theoretically, the blood is going backwards from the ventricle back to the atria and the ventricle volume is decreasing. So these really aren't isovolumetric phases anymore because during isovolumetric phases, both valves are closed. In this case, we have an incompetent AV valve. And again, we have backward flow from the ventricle to the atria because of the pressure difference and that's what's going to dictate the flow. So this is sometimes called a holosystolic murmur. For the aortic regurgitation and pulmonic regurgitation we can do the similar analysis. IVR filling and IVC are normally the phases where the semilunar valves are closed. Now during these phases ventricle volume is going to increase because we have backward flow from the great artery to the ventricle. And now I could put quotes around the isovolumetric phases because they're not isovolumetric anymore because of the backward flow. Now, theoretically, these are the phases that I could hear the murmur. Depending on the severity, I may not hear it going all the way through uh, an IVC, but that is when the pressure difference is still greater in the great artery than the ventricle. So theoretically, it could extend out through this IVC, which isn't IVC anymore. To summarize this now, I have systolic and diastolic type of murmurs, stenosis, regurgitation type of murmurs. 
stenosis. I hear the murmur when the valves open. So ejection and filling are the only two phases where I have an open valve, so I can put those in accordingly. For regurgitation, I hear the murmur when the valve is supposed to be closed, and you can see here that's what we did. We put the times where the valves are closed for the mitral and tricuspid and the aortic and pulmonic. And the interesting thing here is we lose our isovolumetric phases because we don't have both sets of valves closed anymore. There's an incompetent valve that's allowing backward flow dictated by pressure differences that would normally close the valve. And that is really the harder part to understanding this. Now that concludes this lecture on timing of heart murmurs caused by valvular lesions.